Okay. Can you read my shirt? She had the soul of a gypsy, the heart of a hippie, the spirit of a fairy. Cute. I love it, Julie. That's so you. That is so you. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Tonight is May 5th. It is our Ask Julie Anything for May. And Julie planned something super special tonight. Um, she's going to just use. What's that? Ahead, that I had to just use for a neighbor, but go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, that she uses daily. Today we're gonna take a look inside Julie's personal first aid toolbox, what she uses to stay prepared and, and when things happen, what she keeps on hand to, oh, I don't know, Julie, all kinds of things. Help help first aid, help our animals. You said you just helped one of your, your neighbor's animals? Yeah, his, her horse had colic or has oh, colic. Heck. So anyway. Yeah. Um, another note, Julie, so today Julie's going to do like a presentation style. It's a little bit different. And, and if we have time, we're getting... no, no, I think it's cool that you're going to talk about the things that you use and it'll be easier for us in the audience to take notes as well. Yeah, no, it, it'll just keep me on track because we are only going to, do you want to tell them why I can only do an hour today? Yeah, we're not going to go over time today because, um, Poppy Phillips, her group is hosting the Canine Cancer Free Summit. It's a challenge happening this week. Uh, Julie's going to be speaking on Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and Julie, your topic is our innate ability in cancer prevention. So I'll see Aaron Love, not to be missed. Um, so that's why we're going to cut it short today. We're only going to go till 8 p.m. Eastern just for an hour because Dr. Jean Dodds is over on that page today and her session starts in about an hour. Yeah, it's gonna be a really cool, it's a, it's it's free to, to join up. And are you gonna put the, um, the link in the thing so yeah. that if people wanna join, they can. Absolutely. But Billy Hoekman, Rita Hogan, myself, um, Jean Dodds, I don't know who else is on it, but. Dr. Margot Roman, uh, yeah. Peter Ciancarelli was on. I hope I'm not missing anyone. There's a handful of, of industry experts that are well known in the industry that are speaking specifically on this topic all week. And uh, it, it's been a pretty exciting event. I'll put the link in the chat here in just a sec. Okay. Tonight, Dr. Dodds is gonna talk about introducing her new breakthrough technology for early detection. Okay, hi everyone, I see you in the chat. Thanks for joining us. Julie, I'm gonna let you get started right away um, okay. since we are on a bit of a, cr a time crunch today. Okay, I'm just gonna keep my phone open too so I can see what time it is. Sure. Um, so I think that, uh, hi everybody, first of all. Um, I think that the, <clears throat> I'm kind of well known to be overprotective with my animals and a worry wart and and you would think I would be the opposite because I, I have the experience and whatever. And I'm, I'm the total polar opposite when it comes to my animals, my animals, I freak out and get all stressed out. And, and, and so everyone always tells me that I'm hyper vigilant and overprepared and blah, 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 blah. But I, I would much prefer to be over prepared than underprepared. And I think that my grandma used to always say to me, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I, and I totally believe that. So um, I drive around with my, in my truck with so many homeopathic remedies and, and um, you know, gauze and things like that in case I come across an accident or person or animal. Um, I'm not supposed to do anything with people, but I usually always do. And, um, and, or, you know, wildlife hit by, hit by cars or, you know, a bird that's been hit by a car or whatever. My um, amazing boyfriend, just the other day, someone hit a pheasant and, um, and it was flopping around on the road and he got out and Anyways, he <clears throat> held it and drove with it in the car for a while and it and it recovered, but he has go-to in his car, our, our go-to, because he does sort of the same thing as, as me. 
So anyways, what I thought I would do is because there's so many different things that can happen, like on the beach or if you're camping and especially now with COVID and you can't go in with your animals and it's just a, it's just a really good idea to, to, to be prepared. So what I'm going to try and do, cause I don't have a slide presentation or anything, but I'm just going to um, bring up my blog that I, that I just did. And in that, um, let's see, share. Steph, will you, can you tell me if it's okay? Do I need to make it bigger still? It looks good, Julie. I don't know if you want to do the command plus thing a couple more times I for us in the audience. Try that. Is it I know, command plus? <clears throat> yeah. I know you're on your super huge screen over there. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Okay. Oops. It's not doing it. You might oh. be as zoomed in as you can be. That's okay. That works just fine. I can okay. still read it. Everyone in the audience, can you guys still see okay? Can they? Oh, can. why don't I send the link and we can all follow along. Oh yeah, everyone says they can see just fine. They can? Yeah. Okay. So again, um, what I think is really important, so just, just your basics, right? The um, things like gauze um, or cotton swabs. And when we say, when I say swabs, they're like, like little squares. Uh, don't use cotton balls. Lots of people have cotton balls in their in their first aid kits, and they're they're horrific, especially if you have to do anything around an eye, and then a little piece gets stuck in their eye, or if there's a cut and you're wiping it. Cotton swabs cause more more infections, I think, than than they do good. I'd rather rip a piece of my shirt or something than use a than use a cotton ball. Um, Non-stick bandages or wraps. Uh, some people out there that have horses know them as vet wrap. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Then you're not, it doesn't stick to the, to their hair, but it definitely sticks to their, like sticks to each other. So it, it, it's the best for, for using wraps and bandages. If you want to have medical tape, sometimes that's a good idea. Scissors definitely are good. Um, if you can find scissors that are called bandage scissors, they're they're really great to have, especially if you're hiking or something by yourself. Because if your dog or your cat or whatever you're with is moving around a lot and you're trying to hold them, um, uh, bandage scissors are blunt end scissors. So they're blunt on the end so that if they do move, you're not stabbing them. Um, tick removal tool, definitely you need more of those. Tweezers in case they get a big uh, sliver or something. Um, towels or cloths, clean water. I always make sure that we have, that you have like a bottle of water. Uh, saline solution, which is really good for infections and you can make your own with a quarter teaspoon of table salt and a cup of purified water. Uh, packages of electrolytes. I don't know if you guys know what they are, but they're, you can get things called Pedialytes for kids when kids are dehydrated from getting vomiting and diarrhea, but absolutely make sure that they don't have xylitol or aspartame in it. And, um, you know, if you're, if you don't have anything like that and you want to just pack some um, cans of, or a can even, even just one can of coconut water. Make sure again that it doesn't have any sweeteners in it, but coconut water is really good as well. If, if you're at a point where something has been vomiting or di or, or dehydrated, that would happen probably, let's say you're camping and you're quite a ways out and your dog drinks some kind of funky water and then all of a sudden they're throwing up and they've got explosive diarrhea and you're, you got to hike back um, because they're sick, but by then they're dehydrated. <clears throat> Having electrolytes, and all the, you know what's missing in here actually is a syringe. You should really have a syringe with you, a clean syringe, so that you can take these electrolytes or this or um, coconut water and slowly squirt it into their mouths. And I mean slowly, like we're talking five cc's at a time, because if you do more and they're vomiting, then they're just going to vomit it all back up. If they just have diarrhea, then you don't have to worry so much about it. You can you can be giving them more. Um, so as far as uh, uh, herbs that you can take along. This was a, a big list of hypericum, uh, golden seal, green tea, 
uh, horsetail, calendula, and the reason that those are my favorites is because those were what I, was what I used all the time in my vet hospital, and that's what our always in oopsies is made out of. So those are my favorite. Those are my favorite herbs for anything that has anything to do with um, cuts and abrasions and things like that. So you can, you'll be able to, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time because uh, I want to have questions um, about what it does, but trust me, it is, uh, they're life-saving herbs when it comes to, when it comes to disinfecting, derailing infections, um, soothing, you can use them on bug bites and abrasions and, and even for yourself, if you have like a really bad, um, uh, uh, even sunburn to mist it over a sunburn really helps. And, um, so you can use this in a bunch of different ways. You can, you can get it through our products or you can, and you can buy them in tinctures. You can also make them in teas and you can use them with teas and, 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 um, pour the teas over it, or you can do salves and the salve, you can buy them within salves. That's also, also really good, but you can make this salve up as well. So if you wanted to go ahead and buy all of these tinctures, you can do that. And then you can make your own salve that you want you, that you can put into a, a container. The reason that I like, um, I was thinking of doing always in, always in oopsies in a salve, the, the reason that I didn't was especially because if you're out in where there's pine needles or dirt and you've got salve, it's, it's, it, things stick to it. And then sometimes it can, it can create a bigger problem. But the opposite to that is if you have a really thick salve and you have a big wound and you just pack that salve on, that's, that's really good too. If you don't want to um, go and find all of those uh, ingredients and you want to just do something, you can you can actually take the always and oopsies and you can mix it in coconut um, coconut oil and then let it harden or stick it in the fridge. And uh, if you just mix the always and oopsies with it, you can actually make your own salve. So this is the bigger ones that I wanted to get to is. Um, uh, homeopathy. So the, uh, what we want, absolutely make sure that you have these in your toolkit, I think. So aconite, arnica, symphytum, ruta, calendula, and apis. And they should all be in something called 200C. Now, because this was a blog and I couldn't put too much stuff in and I didn't want to seem silly, uh, if you're backpacking it's it to have everything in one um, is often hard to carry a lot of stuff. So your go-to, my go-to has aconite and arnica in it. So that's what you can use for anything like any kind of trauma. So acute shock and acute trauma, it's, it's really good. Um, but symphytum ruta and calendula and arnica is in our jump for joints. So if you wanted to take both of those, you would, if something was an instant like tra traumatic fall, you would actually do go to and you would do jump for joints and you can, you can do them like every, every 10, <clears throat> every 10 minutes for four doses for the initial injury. And then you can basically sort of keep giving it as it's as needed every one to two hours until you can get your, your dog or your cat to the vet or until you can get out of wherever you're camping, at least to, to support them. But let's say you're you're on the beach and you're just having fun and you're throwing frisbees and things, and all of a sudden your dog tweaks its leg, um, or you tweak your leg. Having those two remedies will will immediately help to support the inflammation so that the trauma doesn't get worse. So sometimes it can derail it and, it, and, and by the time you get them to the vet or by the time you get them home, they're, they're often, you know, 50 to 60 to 70% better. Um, but if, if not, and, and it's really bad, at least you're, you're derailing some of the chronic problems that you can get from acute 
tend, tendon injuries or acute blows or falls, things like that. The other thing I wanted to go back up, reading it now, I wish I had written this in, but the other thing I would say is to have for eye injuries, I would have um, tea bags with, with you, either uh, calendula tea or green tea, so that if, if something it does have an eye injury, you can make a tea or, or actually put the, use the always and oopsies or, and, and no, use the go-to and the jump for joints and then take a tea bag and place it on their eye. The other thing that's really good for eye is colloidal silver. So long as it's, it, it's in a spray so that it doesn't get contaminated. Uh, colloidal silver is really good for eyes. I, I get a little leery of colloidal silver for wounds because it seems to dry them out really fast. So, but colloidal silver is great for um, major eye stuff until you can get them to the bed. But when we come down to homeopathy, the other one that is, isn't in our, in our go-to or isn't in our um, uh, jump for joints is apis. And apis is amazing for bee stings or any kind of allergic reactions. Like, like let's say that you, they start to swell up because they've gotten into uh, poison ivy or stinging nettle, or they've bit, been bitten by a spider, or they've been bitten by some kind of a bug. It's, it's a great one to, to have on hand. And the same thing you would do my personally, I would give go to because you're going to give aconite and arnica. The aconite and arnica helps with the trauma and the pain. And it also will help to reduce sort of that histamine reaction, that sudden histamine reaction and the intensity if they get really freaked out because, because it's hurting. That helps them to calm down right away. And then the apis is specifically for um, swelling and, and edema. You can use it for, let's say they do get into something that you don't even know and their nose starts to swell up, like almost anaphylactic. Um, and to, as you're getting them out of wherever you are in, into a clinic, you, could get, you would give go-to and apis together and you would just keep giving it every five to 10 minutes um, as you, as you're, as you're driving to the, to the veterinarians. One other thing that's not there that I would actually have there is something called carbo veg and carbo veg is, we call that in, in homeopathy, the corpse reviver. It is incredible if something is been severely injured or has had, um, you know, like things like drowning or has had asphyxiation in some way, or, you know, you, you, you come across a dog that's been left in a car and they, you know, they're, they're, they've got severe heat stroke, uh, uh, or even for, you know, any, any time where there's a collapse and like, like you're seriously worried that this animal or this person is dying. Uh, I would be doing aconite and arnica and carbo veg and everything, everything up here is in, I would, it, it's hard to purchase one M's in. That's why I like our, our, our um, jump for joints, the extra strength one, because they're actually one M's. So they're, they're high, they're a high potency to deal with acute, acute really acute um, injuries. Uh, Apis would be good in either eight, uh, 1M or 200C, and you would do it uh, with the arnica and the aconite. You would do it the same way every 10 to 15 minutes, maybe for three or four doses. By then, you should start seeing it uh, cool down and the, the dog be less reactive. That's the other good thing about tea bags. If you have calendula or chamomile tea, you can soak it quickly. You don't even have to worry about using hot water, just get it really wet and, and hold it right on the bee sting. Uh, you can put always an oopsie on it and then just take a whole tea bag and then you can wrap it with a, wrap it with a, um, uh, a, a vet wrap, right? So that's a, that's a, that's a really nice thing to be able to do if it's on, if it's on their leg, or let's say you get stung by a bee. I hate getting stung by bees or a lot, especially wasps. Um, my thing that I do is I take, I take apis and go to right away. I spray always and oopsies on it. I stick a cold, cold, wet tea bag on it and I wrap it. 
with, with bet wrap. And it's incredible how quickly it helps to reduce the swelling. The last thing that's in there that isn't in there, isn't that crazy, Stephanie, that I'm looking at this now and thinking of all this other stuff, is um, something called Leadum. Or do I say, do I talk about Leadum down here? I don't know if I do. You might have in your flea and tick blog, Julie. Yeah, I did. Okay, so Leadum is the other one um, that I that I would have on hand. It's spelled L-E-D-U-M. And I would get a 1M or a 200C. Leadum is my Leadum and Aconite and Arnica. So my, that's why it's called my go-to because I use go-to for absolutely everything. Um, it's everywhere. It's in my car. It's in my barn. It's in my house. It's in my backpack. It's in, it's in, in all my all my family and friends have it stuck in theirs as well. Um, but if they, if you get, if they get bitten by a tick or your animals get bitten by a tick, you remove them correctly. And then you can give them uh, aconite and arnica and lead them. And I do that probably every, I do it probably every one hour for three doses. And then I do it once a day for three days. Julie, there's a question here, if you don't mind me butting no, in. No, but yeah. Can, can these apply to cats too? Absolutely, yep. The only thing that you have to be careful with cats is always an oopsies because it has alcohol in it and they and it can sting just a tiny little bit. So um, you for cats, you can just take the always and oopsies and dilute it. So just dilute it like, um, like a teaspoon a teaspoon of always and oopsies to half a cup of water and stir it around. And then you can use that. I just, I just, cats, you have to be just really, really careful with, because if it stings at all, then they can freak out even more, but everything else, like all the, all the homeopathic remedies can be used on anything. Like, like I said, birds that have been hit by cars, people, cats, dogs, horses, pigs, cows, it, it really doesn't matter. I even know, I have a friend that has a beautiful nursery in British Columbia. And um, every time I would transplant something, I would give it aconite and arnica, like plants. And they thought I was insane. And they started, they just tried it because I, I had a really good um, success of things not dying when I transplanted them. And they tried it and they they use it all the time. Now they're probably my, <laughs> one of our biggest um uh, purchasers of, of your go-to. So it can be used on anything. You don't have to worry about, about it being contraindicated with drugs, homeopathy. Um, your, your animals can be on any kind of drugs and you can still use it. Uh, you don't have to worry about their age. Like if they're really old or they're really, or their puppies are kittens. It, homeopathy is such a phenomenal, phenomenal modality of medicine because especially in acutes and first aid because you just um there's there's just so there's really no concern about doing anything wrong and when you don't feel like you're going to do something wrong and you just go ahead and do it right away what that does which is awesome is it is it is it nips it right away Right. So you're not like, oh, my gosh, I got to just get it from the vet and it's two hours away or, oh, I want to use this herb, but I can't get it into them because they're throwing up or, oh, I'm, you know, whatever. You don't have to worry about it. You just just do it. Just go ahead and do it. Julie, do you yeah. know do you know a source in the U.S. that people can use to purchase homeopathics? Yeah, there's um, homeopathy overnight. That's a good one. Uh, Hahnemann Labs is a really good one. Um, I would, Homeopathy Overnight has, I think has the biggest selection of homeopathic medicine. Great, good. AW, there's your answer. And Julie, um, you were willing to open up, well, I think you wanted to ask people. I did, what their biggest fear is as far as, as far as what should they do if something happens like what's your biggest fear like something gets hit by a car or i know a lot of people have concerns about about different things and if you do and you want to ask me about what might be um 
you know, what, what might, because when you're, when you're camping or you're out on the beach or whatever, so many, so many different things can happen. Right. And it's just, it's, it's, it really is life-saving if you can get something into your animal while, while it's on the way to the vets, if it's that bad, it can, it can save, you know, it can be the difference between not getting there in time and getting there and being okay. Yeah. There's one here. Joe says snake bites. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. So if you're in an area of, you can hear my duck, she's quacking because she wants to go outside because it's getting dark. Um, uh, if you're in an area for snake bites, that's a really good question. Uh, again, aconite and arnica for sure. And a remedy called lachesis, spelled L-A-C-H. And uh, lachesis is actually make, made from snake venom. And it can be, it's incredibly, um, I, I know people that, that are in Arizona and different, different places that, that have snakes and they don't, they don't leave the house unless they've got aconite arnica and lachesis in their bag. And, and it's the same, the same thing you would be giving it, you know, every, every five to 10 minutes, even until you can get them back. Awesome. Um, Robin's worried about her HCM cat going into heart failure on the way to the vet. Oh, because she gets so stressed going to the vet, you mean? I'm not sure. I, I'm not really even sure what heart? HCM is. Yeah, Robin, let us the know. Heart thing. Yeah. Yvonne's worried about bleeding. Okay, find out if she's talking about get when the cat has to go to the vet. Freaks out going to the vet really badly, she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Aconite and Arnica. Because Arnica is amazing for the heart, too, which is really cool. Though mm -hmm. so it really, really supports the heart and Aconite is, is for fear. So you can give, and, and with kitties, again, you can, especially in a situation like that, because it's not like an, an accident. So you can take Aconite and Arnica and you can, you can put like four pumps of your go-to in water, like in a, in a half a cup of water, stir it around and then take a little syringe or an eyedropper and give your kitty like 0 0.5 mils, like an eye, an eyedropper full or 0 0.5 mils in a, in a, um, with a little syringe and cats are the easiest way to do it is you lift up their take, let's say this is a syringe or the, or the, eyedropper lift it up under their gum like this and then just tip their head and just squirt it like this on their gum because that's it goes into the mucous membranes and right into the bloodstream so you don't have to stick it in their mouth and they don't have to swallow it so long as you get it in their on their lips so I would do that I would I would give it to her about an hour before you're going to take her to the vets just before you put her in the car and then take it with you so that you can give it to her again as soon as you get to the vets or if something, you know, you know, if, if she, if you really felt like you need to, to, to give it to her on the way and pull over and give it to her again, you could. Awesome, Julie. There's another one here. Um, AW is asking, how about when you administer the tabs? Could you talk a little bit about that? The tablets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the best way is to take two two spoons, like two teaspoons, put the tablets in the teaspoon, then take the other teaspoon and, and fit it over top. Are you following me? Am I making sense, Steph? Yeah. Okay, so you put it over top and then you wrap it with a paper towel and then you push it down. You squish it like that. And when you squish it, you break the tablets into a powder and then you just make it more of a powder and then you just lift, lift up your dog or cat's lip and you dump it on their tongue on their tongue or on their on their gums. Easy peasy. Yeah, or you can dissolve the tablets in water. It takes about mm -hmm. 20 minutes though. Perfect. Anything else in the chat here that anyone else is worried about oh, when it comes to bleeding. first aid? What's that? So the, someone said bleeding. Oh yeah, bleeding. Yvonne was asking about bleeding. Okay, so first of all, you have to stop the bleeding. But what's, that's another remedy that everyone should have in their kit 
for bleeding. I mean, we couldn't give too much information because I didn't know where people were gonna get remedies and stuff, but phosphorus it's called. So everybody probably should have phosphorus, um, 200 C. And if they're bleeding, you give go to and phosphorus together and wrap it, right? Get a, get a, get your gauze, gauze bandage out. Um, put your gauze bandage, put pressure on it, put the bandage on it, and then just keep giving the, keep giving the phosphorus and the arnica and the aconite. Awesome. So we've all got a little homeopathic lineup to keep with us and, and have in our, our drawer when we need it. I've got a ton of other questions, Julie, but just as long as everyone's okay with the, the homeopathic first aid, you guys let me know in the chat if you have anything else. What, what could be the most, um, what's the most possibility of something happening, right? So would it be like an acute injury? Would it be, uh, you can always take the pellets and you can, you can mix a pellet. Uh, did I freeze? Are you, fr oh, you're back. Okay, you froze. Um, uh, you can always mix the pellets in right actually in some go-to. So you could take go-to and you could take two pellets of phosphorus if you're concerned about bleeding, or you could take two pellets of leadum if you're afraid about of, um, of the, of uh, a tick bite, right? And you can mix it, or you can take your pellets. This is, this is, a, this is another thing that you can do. So let's say you take your pellets and you have a thing of go-to or a thing of jump for joints and there's a situation and you need to be giving a bunch of different remedies all at once. You can take those pellets. So let's say you're gonna take, let's say your, your, your dog has hurt itself and it's, it's fallen and it's limping and it's got a gash. You can just take jump for joints and go to, and you can pour, I mean, Yes, you're going to, are you going to, you know, contaminate the bottles, but who cares if your dog or, dog or cat is really injured. You, you can dump some out, mix them together, and then add the phosphorus pellets right in with the liquid, shake it up, wait even five minutes, and then start giving it to them. I would give them the aconite arnica and whatever right away, and then take the pellet of choice, meaning whether it's whether it's apis, whether it's um, um, phosphorus, it's leadum. And if you're really stressed out, you can actually put the pellets inside the liquid remedy and shake it up. And then you can be giving that as you're, as you're um, trying to get out of the campsite and over to a vet, or you can, if you're stuck in a certain place and you have to keep giving it regularly, then you can actually keep giving it from the pellets that have dissolved in the in the bottles. Does that make sense? Or do you have just people have questions about that? That makes perfect sense to me. Holly's got a question here. Could you talk what's the shelf life of homeopathics? Oh my gosh. Well our homeopathics have a shelf life of a minimum of three years. Um and they have to put shelf lives on them, but homeopathy lasts a long, long time. I would say at least three years, at least. Mm -hmm. three to five if the pellets perfect here's one from carlene could you recommend anything for a seizure they've never had one before you helped me with this before julie mm -hmm. i can't they've never had a seizure but they're worried about seizures what would you do for a seizure and they've never had one before sounds like maybe they've had one recently oh well Seizures, there's a bunch of different, depends on why they're seizuring, right? Well, if they're having like a idiopathic epileptic seizure, which is for no reason, um, or if they're seizuring because of a head injury, that can happen too, or they're seizuring because they've gotten into poison, right? All three of them are very different. So a seizure that has an idiopathic seizure, which is like your dog's death, um, a seizure takes a lot of energy to happen, 
right? Like when a dog or a cat or a person is seizuring, they use up, I don't even know how many thousands of calories, but they use up a lot of calories. And what can happen is when they come out of it, they can be hypoglycemic because they've used up so much energy and they can actually go back into it. So um, what can, what you can do then is you can give them some, I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but you can give them some honey or a little bit of ice cream or some food, like just some food, um, try to get them to eat a little. They're usually really hungry when they come out, but aconite, arnica, and belladonna are my three go-tos for a seizure. And then you get them to the vets and find out why they're seizuring. So, uh, if it's, um, if it's a, if it's a head injury and you would just, if you had jump for joints, I would be doing jump for joints and go to, and if it's head injury, you, you would be doing that every five minutes. If your dog has had, had such a bad head injury or a cat that it's seizuring, you need to get it to the vets because it probably should go on. It should probably have something like a dexamethasone or something like that to make sure that they don't have brain swelling. But, but that's when you can, that's when you can derail something that could be extremely life-threatening or have chronic long-term effects. And I would be doing, like I said, I would be doing uh, jump for joints and your go-to. And if you only have your go-to, then just your go-to. But every five minutes, I would be doing that if it's seizuring mm -hmm. or, did, or has a seizure from something like that. If it is a some kind of a poisoning, then I would be doing aconite and arnica. That's the other thing that you guys should get to is nux vomica. So nux vomica is your go-to homeopathic remedy for chemical poisonings. So if you were, that's definitely something that you should have on hand so that if you know your dog got into something in your camping or you're even at home and you, and you see it eat something and you, and you're pretty sure it's poisonous or they, or you think that it got into something and it's seizuring or it's like barfing its guts out and it's really, really sick on your way to the vets again, you should be doing aconite, arnica, and nux vomica together. Nux vomica is very good to help the body, the kidneys, and the liver handle poisoning until you can get to a poison control or can, until you can get to a to a clinic to help to help with that. Perfect. Uh, do we have any in the well, store? Mushrooms. Same with same with mushrooms. So if, if they if they were to eat poisonous mushrooms, same thing when you when you get them like keep giving them that until you get them to the um uh until you get them to the to the bats awesome uh here's another question okay to leave a kit in the car when it's extremely hot or cold well liquid our liquids shouldn't freeze because there's alcohol in them um but I wouldn't leave liquids out when it's freezing, freezing cold. You know, they, they could, they could, um, the, the bottles could break. But, you know, it's a, mine are down on my barn and it can get pretty cold in my barn. And, and I haven't had an issue with them. But homeopathic remedies can take quite a bit of heat and, and quite a bit of cold and still be completely fine. I used to be a lot more concerned about the viability of homeopathics. And as a classically trained homeopath, you know, we're, we're told like, don't put them here and don't drink this and don't eat this and don't do that. And then that quickly changed when I went to India and I worked in India or trained in India and saw everybody's like eating, drinking coffee and eating chilies and still taking homeopathic remedies and it worked just fine or or when I was treating feral cats with the Vancouver from kitten rescue you know we were we were jamming homeopathic remedies into all kinds of different food and leaving it out in the sun and mixed in food and everything and you know for sure they work because you're looking at a feral cat with an abscess like this big head and you start putting these remedies out and within a week the, the, the abscess is gone or, or, or the cat's doing a lot better. So it, it's not as fragile as people make it out to be. So um, 
yeah, don't be scared. Don't be scared to use them. I think the worst thing with them is keeping them near computers, like because they're energetic medicine, I would try to keep them not stored by your computers or your cell phones and things like that. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Uh, there's Heather has a question about homeopathy for anxiety in dogs. Yep. Well, again, um, you know, aconite, uh, argentum nitricum is a good one if it's an anxiety anxiety, but I just tell people like to use the go-to when it comes to fireworks, like anxiety with that. Uh, but anxiety where, where they feel like, you know, something's going to happen. Like if they're anticipating, anticipating anxiety, a really good remedy for that is something called Argentum nitricum. So Argentum nitricum and aconite are, are two, two really good ones for that. Awesome. Okay. Let's see. Oh gosh, I've got a lot of questions here, Julie. <laughs> now they're not all related to homeopathy. How do you feel about going off topic for the last 15 minutes? That's here? fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. All righty. Let's start here at the top. This is Robin again. So it's her her HCM cat, 14 year old HCM cat has his cardiology checkup coming soon. He gets unbelievably freaked out in the carrier. You know what? Maybe we did talk about this. We did. Um, he's okay. open mouth breathing. Aconite. So we did talk about that. Sorry, guys. So can wait a minute. He's asking, can she do aconite before even with a gabapentin? Yes, you can. Yeah. You can do, you can do the, the, the go-to with gabapentin. That's not a problem. And um, yeah. That's a, not, don't worry about that. Here's another one from Jim. Hey, Jim. His Tibetan Terrier's incisive papilla yeah. is somewhat inflamed and reddish. He doesn't want us to brush his teeth in that area. Should this be something to be concerned about? We have been putting a few drops of CBD oil on it. We don't have a mic, so please ask this question. What? Oh, okay. Hmm. I would get it checked out. I wouldn't do much about it, but I would get it checked out. And then I would treat it probably more. I would treat it with, you know, all natural anti-inflammatories or get a hold of a, an animal homeopath. But, you know, you can, I would, I would just find out why, why is it inflamed? Um, don't, I wonder if the CBD oil on it has been helping, but you know, you can try using, again, you can try using aconite and arnica, but you know, it, it's always nice to know why for me at my clinic, I wanted to know why I never, not to the point of making them a lab rat, that's for sure. But I always wanted to know why. So I get, could get more specific, like especially specific with homeopathic remedies or you know, is it histamine related? Do I want to use quercetin or is it more, you know, um, uh, an allergic, like if it, is it, is it histamine related? Is it injury related? Is it there, like, what, what's the causation? If you can figure out the causation, sometimes you can get a lot, lot point things a lot better. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Jim. So my two dogs have had a PCR test that came back positive. I wonder if I for a week good for them while they're on Tylosin for another six weeks. I have been using Gut Soothe for years and wonder if I should change to Fido's Flora and stop the Gut Soothe. Um, I have two things about that. I would do them both together because that can that particular bacteria can cause some damage. And so when you're using the, when you're using the gut tooth, it can help with the inflammatory response of the damage. And then the phytos flora, definitely, because it, it has, it has that canine DNA, right? So, and it, and it has a not only, it has a, a modulating effect. And then the, the fulvic and humic acid can help to sort of chelate toxins, which, which, it's kind of a, an, it would be an overall approach to that. 
I would definitely start them on Fido's Flora for sure. Thank you, Julie. My friend Beth here has got a question. Yeah. Any advice for a newly a dog newly diagnosed with CLL? No organs affected, no real symptoms, but super white blood cell count is 251K. Yeah. Full of energy, eating well, focusing now on immune support. Is Andrea taking patients? Because I would definitely be treating that dog constitutionally. Andrea, well, Beth, I can send you Andrea's um, website and you can check with her. It's andrearing.ca. I just put it there in the chat for you. That's an option. Waiting for window period to end before testing it again. Before Kochi, we were on. I don't know what Kochi is. Just Kochi free. I'm not sure. Judy, are you here? What's what's Kochi free? Carb free? It's for parasites. Oh. It must be a product. Um, I would be, I would be doing like a an intense, intense homeopathic parasite support, like, like intense. But again, I would be giving them Andrea's number, I guess, or, or any of our other vets that are, that are doing, that are doing um, homeopathics. Because things video. like that, like, like lo there's lots of, um, uh, it, it's yeah it's a product like for Jardia yeah so I mean that makes sense but I think there are so many incredible remedies for for that type of a parasite like China and um there China especially but I think I think for him to be for a two-year-old dog to have um to have that, there's something going on. Uh, there's something going on if it's a two-year-old dog. Um, I would. Oh, two years plus. Was have what two? Was that is it the two-year-old dog? It doesn't matter. I would get a hold of a homeopath, for sure. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Angela's got a question here, real quick. Her cat has had chronic leaky eye since she was a kitten. The vet says it's common to have a leaky eye duct in a rag doll cat. Is this a physical issue or could it possibly be treated? Mm. Um, does it, I wonder if it's sneezing too, or is it just a leaky eye? Let's see if Angela's here. Angela, are you on with us? Yes, I am, hi. Hey. I would, has, does it sneeze too, or it's just his eye? It's just the eye. Just the eye. Yeah, and it gets well, yeah. I mean, if it's a leaky eye duct, um, you know, silica is a really good one for that. Homeopathic silica, like a low potency. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a duct that's, that is, um, blocked like a blocked duct is that what they mean a blocked duct or or a duct that hasn't that isn't functioning i'm not really sure they just said it was common in uh himalayan cats and something about the eye ducts mm -hmm. well um l-lysine is really good for for stuff that's the eye stuff that's a that's a that's a supplement but the remedies like silica are really good, like a low potency silica, 30C, okay, 12C, and give it to them daily for, you know, 10 days. 
and okay. see what happens. You know, compressing if it if it's if it's if it's plugged, then it should be able to unplug. If it's congenital and they're born without the the sphincter or the or the ability for them to the gland to to function properly, then maybe that it's it won't work. But you know, lots of times anything to do with glands like anal glands or or the the gland of the eye or you know salivary glands when a, when a gland is is um not working correctly silica is an incredible an incredible remedy to help the gland or the body to um uh reject or push push things out so it's a that would be something that you could try okay and is that a um you mix it like with the water and you can just inject it just in their mouth mm -hmm. okay yep and i would never go over a t over a 30c i would do a 12c or a 30c okay all right thank you so much you're welcome thanks angela julie do you want to do one more real quick and then we can yep. give everyone a, a yep. quick break before the next session you're starting off with feeling gut seal protocol but once antibooks over two days, should the other four pro what, what? KH23. Take on whether starting off with feline gut soothe protocol or, or leaky gut protocol maybe, or gut seal protocol. I don't know what, what they're, what they mean. KH. Must be, must meaning, must be meaning. Um, Hello. Hi. Uh, hi, Julia. <laughs> Can you hear me? Again. Uh, yes, I messed up the question a little bit. Sorry, I, okay. I have a, I have a fifteen year old female cat, and she's been struggling with uh, lesions. She's got skin problems. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, ba basically, I, I I read your blogs about uh, gut seal protocol and uh, vaccinosis, and I and I understand the concept, and I agreed. It must be that because nothing seems to be helping her at the moment. Okay. Uh, so I've got the protocol and I just wonder if I do two days of anti-vaccinosis as per the protocol, yep. should, should, should I then start giving her the uh, other four products simultaneously or at the same time? At the same time. At the same time. Yeah, okay. you do the two days and really, really watch because if this is a kitty, watch once you do the, the two days of the, of the anti-vaccinosis, see yeah. if she starts to improve like so over the next two or three weeks let's see if she starts to improve and then let's say she is but then she gets to a point where she's not improving anymore or she starts to slide back a little bit mm -hmm. you can repeat the anti-vaccinosis yeah. so okay. you can do you can do that anti-vaccinosis once a month if you're yeah. seeing if you're seeing a, a difference if you're seeing okay. the animal um, dog, cat, horse, doesn't matter. If you're seeing them uh, react in a positive manner to the anti-vaccinosis, you can give it to them as long as it's working. You can give it to them every month. You can do, sure. do it twice a day for two days every month. Just, okay, thank you. Just uh, just uh, one more question if I, if I can. Uh, yeah. I, I understand that uh, anti-vaccinosis is best administered directly into um, the mouth, the mouth of, of, of an animal. But the yeah. problem with cats is I've tried giving my cats, you know, medication orally and it's always a bottle. So the can bottle. I just add it? Can I just add it into, into food? You those, can. Those four pumps or eight pumps yeah, as you recommend? Four, four, four pumps into four their pumps. food. That's totally fine. That's okay. what I was saying. Like I, with feral cats uh, and cats in general, all my cats get their remedies just in their food. Always. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's fantastic because that would be a, a mission impossible. Pretty. Yeah. Much. No. We like should. Add, we really should put that in the cat protocol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just that, made a note of that. We should really add that it can go directly in their food. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yes. But basically, I also wanted to say that uh, I uh, made an because I'm from the UK. It's after midnight in the UK at the moment, so I made a a, a, a cons uh, uh, an appointment with Dr. Sue Armstrong. Oh yeah! Yeah, because yeah. your colleague your colleague Kaylin recommended this to to me because I wanted to make an appointment with you, but apparently you don't do appointments anymore. So oh yeah, so tell I'm her. Oh no, she's like my dearest friend. <laughs> 
I'm seeing, I'm seeing Dr. Sue. Yeah, I'm seeing her uh, in uh, mid June because she's very busy at the moment with other patients. But yeah. I, ideally, I'd like to start this protocol ASAP because I can't stand watching my cat suffer no. anymore. No, so, she'll, so. she'll definitely support the protocol. So don't don't worry about that. Okay. She has a really cool thing that she has. It's called TAP, T A P. Yeah. Um, true animal. Yes. What's it called? Steph, uh, true animal companion. No, true some, animal. It's not coming to me. I'm oh my gosh, me. true animal something. T -A something like that. <laughs> CAP, yeah, I'm doing a lecture with her in, in um, or for her um, yeah. in September, I think it is. Yeah, true uh, animal plan. You had a dream. Yeah, true, true animal plan. Yeah, yep. true awesome. Animal plan. It's awesome. Yeah. She's she's wonderful. Yeah. And I, Julie, I also, I uh, apologies, but maybe that's my first and last opportunity to ask uh, questions. It's okay. Uh, I, I also would like to do, because I also uh, got some love bugs. Uh, so I would like to start uh, 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 some some topical treatment, and I think I, I I heard on one of your previous blogs that I could mix it up with uh, yogurt uh, and put it on her face where where the lesions are. Okay. Uh, with, with what? To improve oh, the microbiome oh. of the skin. Yeah, you know what I would try with cats. Cats are so hmm. sensitive. Um, just just mix it with water first. Okay. Just, just with water and rub it in. Okay. And, and, and see okay. first and see if that have what did you, what and what so yogurt and what, what were you gonna use? Yogurt and one of the in love bugs or something? Yes, or? Yo yogurt and love bugs, because this is what I heard on one of your uh talk It does comments. work well with but cat, you know what cats are like? They're so clean. Mm. They're she's probably gonna wanna wash it off, which okay. might make it even worse so if you were to take just love bugs with water okay. and dissolve it with water and just is it on her neck it's basically mainly it's concentrated on her face on, her, uh, face, over her, on face. her face yeah yeah just take a just take a pinch take like a 16th of a teaspoon of love bug like a tiny tiny bit mm. mix it with some you know chamomile tea or green tea just mix it into a water and then just massage it into her face and leave it on. That's what and I would do. How, 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 how much, how much uh, water shall I use for the- Oh, um, for that? Oh, like, the teaspoon? like an, like an mm, no, like an ounce, like okay. an ounce of water. Okay. And then you can just rub it into her face. And um, yeah, you could, you could do that. I would try that before I would do yogurt with a cat. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's a great advice. Thank you very much. And is she stressed when she's itching? uh well she's uh, well I, I think i think it's annoying her yes i think she's a, a stressed uh, uh cat because of the fact that she's been itching for a very long long time now and can uh, you get cbd in the uk yes i i i, I already uh purchased cbd uh, and again because i heard on, on your um uh, blog somewhere but yeah. I think I don't think I, I've got the right um, uh, strength because I only got two and a half percent because I thought, you know, I, 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 sh I should probably start with two and a half percent, but maybe it's not strong enough two and a half percent. I, I don't know. Like 250 milligrams. Is that what you mean? No, it's two and a half percent strength or content of, 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 of this uh, uh, chemical compound. Uh, I don't understand the, that. <clears throat> there are different strengths in the UK. You, you've got oh, it's different than here, probably five percent, twenty percent, and so on and so on. So, but but yes, I I, I tried to give her a few drops already. Okay. She, uh, she seemed to be okay with that. Okay. Uh, can you get our Can you get our our go to over there? Uh, yes, I probably uh, can. Yes, yes. If you can. In times when she's really itchy, like super stressed, and she's like, if she's rubbing her face or itching at her face, yeah, try try giving her some go to as well. Okay. It just kind of sometimes takes the edge off when they get so like over the moon itchy, where they're where they're super. It it, it like it, it it increases their cortisol level, and they get it almost manic about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, your your go my go to can can sometimes just take that edge off. Sure. You know, sometimes you can do it just twice a day for maybe a week. So yeah. 
start the protocol, see how she does. And then yeah. maybe in a week or so, try to get some go-to. And if she's still itching, give yeah. her go-to twice a day for maybe a week and sure. see if that sort of breaks the cycle almost as well. Okay. Okay, we'll do that as well. Okay. And is it, is, it, is, it safe to do, is it safe to start a protocol while uh, she is on Apoquel? Because she's been on Apoquel for the past six days because I, I just decided to give her something to ease her pain because I just couldn't watch her anymore suffering. So Does it help? You know, uh, uh, well, the, the itch subsided, but then I started weaning off yesterday and the itch is back now, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so... Yeah, I, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Julie. That's, that's very useful. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Stephanie, as well. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. Okie dokie. Okay, so, Julie. Yeah. Oh, I think we got to cut it here so that anyone okay. who wants to go to the Canine Cancer Free Summit can. Yeah. Um, as always. I, I do want to answer that one when using phytoplankton. Do we use fish oil? Please do. Okay, just really fast. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's a lot of controversy over phytoplankton and fish oil and whatever. And I, I, I personally feel like I have I have thousands of people that have used phytoplankton in place of fish oil, and their dogs and cats have done amazing, amazing on it. I never say don't use fish oil and use phytoplankton instead. I've, I've never ever said that and and reason being is because we don't have the um we don't have the the research to show exactly what's in it i'm in the middle of doing a, a phytoplankton research because of this but i feel like it can it, you can use it um in conjunction with so that you don't have to use as much fish oil so you reduce the risk of giving your animals rancid oil, which a lot of them are. Um, you also are supporting the ocean so that we're way more environmentally conscious. And uh, uh, there's David Wolf has a, a really excellent, excellent Dr. David Wolf, um, his belief on phytoplankton. I think we have it. We have it somewhere, right, Stephanie, that David Wolf's thing. We should probably, um, at some time, we should probably post that or maybe that person who were, uh, blah, 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 when using phytoplankton, okay, so whoever that is, mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, why don't you ask them to email you directly and, and we can share with them that one post that, that we had. It wasn't sure was a letter yep absolutely uh s just shoot me an email you can email me marketing at adoredbeast.com and and i have some information to send you on that okay what is that separately or the same time oh is that about phytoplankton you can if that's about phytoplankton you can alternate them you can do them at the same time it's kind of it's it's kind of redundant to do them at the same time um uh if you want to try and decrease the amount of fish oil that you're giving really the whole thing is is to watch and see if your animals are doing well or not as well so is their coat better is their energy better is their poops better are their eyes clear are there there's so many more it's not just about omegas right it's not just about giving your animals omegas um, phytoplankton has an incredible prebiotic effect in the gut so that it helps to proliferate any kind of friendly bacteria. It has amino acids, it has vitamins, it has minerals, it has superoxide dismutase of the yin yang so that it's incredible for fighting disease. Um, it's, it, it has a lot more attributes than fish oil. But it, I can't say that it can replace fish oil because I don't have the statistics to show that I, but I do have thousands of patients that um, have, have done not patients, not patients, cl cl uh, customers that have just arbitrarily 
taken their animals off of fish oil, used phytoplankton because they, they don't believe in fish oil. They fish oil and their animals are doing way better. So I think it's, I think I don't, I don't like being lazy. I don't like giving people things so that they can be lazy, meaning not lazy, like what they're doing for their animal, but lazy in their, in their, in their, um, I'm going to do what I'm told to do because so-and-so told me to do that. To me, you have to observe your animal. It's, it, 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 it is so incredibly important to pay attention every single time you change anything or do anything, pay attention and see if they're doing better and see if they're, or they're not doing better and make sure that you're keeping a little journals and things like that. That's the, that's ultimately the most important, but, um, I really want everyone to go on and, and see Dr. Dodds is, uh, if they can get on and watch Dr. Dodds, that would be awesome. Alrighty. Well, I will send the link for everyone here in the chat. So the first link is so you can register for daily reminders. And then the second link is to the Facebook group where you'll have to request to join, but that's where her session is tonight. And that's where Julie is going to be speaking on Saturday um, at six o'clock Eastern. And Julie's talking about our innate ability in cancer prevention, soil, sea, air, and love. It's going to be a pretty incredible session. Hope you guys can join us. And she's doing challenges all week. So definitely join the group and, and go in and check out some free education. And we're giving away some free stuff at the end of mine, aren't we? Yeah, we're giving away a few things. And we also have a super secret surprise that Julie has rustled up but I don't want to spill the beans before your session, okay. Julie. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. See you again. Bye.